Hi everyone. So welcome to Moit's Agrobiology. In the last set of video, we had a quick discussion about insulin, right? But let me remind you something that in the set of videos that I'm talking about, we are going to talk about insulin in detail. We had to talk about how does insulin show its antagonistic fashion, right? Show its behavior for glucose, right? Whenever there is a glucose flux in the cell or outside the cell in the bloodstream, insulin induces the breakdown of glucose into its micro units or else it will induce, say, the aggregation of glucose molecules into its polymers, right? So that was a quite simple and we can easily understand that by understanding the fundamentals of how does this insulin induce the breakdown of glucose and even though the polymerization in the form of TAD, the glycogen, right? But the main basic part over here is that once there is a glucose flux in our body, do we need to eat at that time also? Is the appetite, what we are talking about is the appetite, right? So is there need of, a need of eating at that time when there is a high glucose flux in the body? And if not, then what are those circumstances in which body induces a signal of do not eat or stop eating? We can feel something as an appetite. We call it as an appetite, right? That is a sort of experience of us that our body or brain triggers a message that we have to eat. So eat, start eating. So this video basically is going to discuss about eating appetite, right? What sort of changes in the body induces appetite? What sort of changes in the body suppresses the appetite? So primarily, we need to focus upon the this particular area, the hypothalamus, the brain that is being broken down in, into its micro units where there are neuronal signals. The primary signal that you can see over here, the signal is correctly joined with the muscle and adipose tissue that has no disparity. We, you cannot say that it's a wrong intention. But at the same time, there are two more neuronal signals that is neuropeptide Y and melanocyte stimulating hormone that induces certain signal that induces the breakdown of glucose or else that induces the appetite suppression or appetite expression. We need to understand these circumstances in which our body induces the signal of that you need to eat and you need not to eat right now. Stop eating. So if you had an idea about this cell, we had discussed about this cell. This is a cell. Look, these, these are two dis discrete cells, right? And this particular cell is known as aqueous cell, right? This cell has a three neuronal signals. Signal one that induces the muscle and adipose tissue to create TAGs to create lots of functionalities in the in, in the body. And apart from that, there are two more neuronal cells that is neuropeptide Y and MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone, and that stimulates the appetite. Let's see how. So to understand that, we had discussed about something known as leptin in the previous set of videos. But we did not get any idea and I have not given any idea about what is leptin, how does it induces the changes and does leptin solely work to induce the changes in the appetite? That's not so true, right? Primarily to understand this topic, we need to go to the basics and detail of this topic through the adipocytes, the adipose tissue. How many kinds of adipose tissue are found in the human body and what are their work and when we are going to discuss these all things, these all sort of things, then we will talk about certain receptors that are in our body that induces the appetite. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so very primary thing to understand is that what is the adipose tissue, right? So our topic is going to be primarily adipose tissue, right? So when you talk about any of the human, human being, mankind, you need to listen about something that there is an adipose tissue which contains the fat stored. Doctor says you 
or your particular physician says you that there is an adipose tissue in higher adipose tissue quantity in your body that's why you are obese or something like that if you are obese right but the thing to understand here is what are two sort of types of adipose tissue and how do they act in human body right so when you talk about adipose tissue adipose tissue is being divided into the two the primary is white adipose tissue and secondary is the brown adipose tissue right wet and bad now this white adipose tissue is primarily concerned with increasing the fat quantity in the body whenever you eat something whenever you eat the glucose molecule whenever you take the food whenever you eat these protein molecules they are being changed into the polymers either in the form of ketone bodies would be converted into the glucose by gluconeogenesis or else the process that is carried out is conversion into this TAGs that is triacylglycerols that are the polymer form of fat that is stored in the adipose tissue so these are the these are the white adipose tissues that contains those sort of elements the TAGs that are being stored in our body to induce the body in different ways we'll talk about that later on right second is the bad brown adipose tissue so brown adipose tissue is a sort of tissue that is not primarily noticed in the adults but it when a baby takes birth this tissue is highly recognize, recognizable right now where you can recognize it is that what so organs the baby has heart right um, right cover covering the heart muscle covering the kidneys covering the back all those areas which are ought to be kept warm are being covered by this brown adipose tissue so brown adipose tissue has primarily one and only function that is containing that, that is completing the thermogenesis of the body right so white adipose tissue are rich in TAGs and brown adipose tissue are not rich in TAGs but they have the process of thermogenesis going on in them and adults do not have more than 1% of adipose tissue this one brown one but WAT is, is primarily noticed in the adults if the adult is obese then you can see these adipose tissue in a havoc amount right now why i am teaching this adipose tissue is that to understand the sort of changes that body has to be induced with while this leptin is secreted from the body so when you go to the distinction between these two adipose tissue the distinction primarily is that this wad is containing a big amount of tds right and the nucleus and mitochondria right nucleus in the mitochondria are being constricted so these are the nucleus these are the mitochondria you can understand that are constricted at an at an edge of this cell when you talk about this BATs right brown adipose tissue it has the amount of it has an amount of tricyclosterol that's okay but it's not in the havoc amount that would constrict the cellular cytoplasm into an into an edge that would not happen over here when you talk about bats sorry so when you talk about that the cytoplasm would be as it is as it is found right cytoplasm would be as it is as it is found in the normal individual just a thing to remember is that it would be rich in TAGs that would be split equally right equally around the whole cytoplasm so if you can see 
the primary two differences what I am showing over here is that the one we are showing as WATs that is white adipose tissues are rich in triacylglycerols but have constricted cytoplasm but the one we are showing as BATs do not have a constricted cytoplasm if you can see it quite easily. Okay. Okay, so that was a quite easy to understand but why we are discussing this WAT is because this is the area, this is the particular segment of the cell, the TAG is that is found primarily in the adults is an area from where the leptin would be generated, right? That is also sort of very surprising, right? Astounding <laughs> feeling when you will believe, know that leptin is actually generated from this area, the TAGs, and it would induce the hypothalamus directly and indirectly to induce the signal of eat and not to eat, right? This is the one leptin. But where does insulin come in between? The main problem arises. We will understand that also because insulin is something that that is not solely the breaking system. That's not solely the breaking system of these glucose molecules into its macro units. That something else also. That's polypeptide has. That particular polypeptide has an um, omnipresent function. Means it, 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 it would come into any of the cascade. It does cross talks between the various cascades and induces each and every cascade in a different manner. Right? So let's understand this sort of thing also over here quite feasibly so that it would not create any problem. Okay. So now the problem arises Whenever we, are, we try to understand this process, this cascade of how does the appetite is being regulated in our body, right? So this is the adipose tissue, we call it as a white adipose tissue and it contains all the signals for inducing the appetite if, even if you have to eat or you have not to eat, right? So what happens is once this white adipose tissue is rich in what source say rich in triacylglycerols that the TAGs say 99 percent of the cell is completely filled with TAGs and what induces the replenishment of these TAGs is the glucose molecule. So whensoever there is a flux of glucose outside that would induce this glucose to be converted into the fat molecules and would be stored in these white adipose tissues. Once these glucose molecules are being stored in the form of TADs to these white adipose tissues or, or say lipid molecules or say protein molecules in the form of ketone bodies then further converted into this, uh, this, this uh, TADs and being stored into this WATs then what happens is that the stimulation or, or, or the secretion of this leptin hormone from these TADs once this leptin hormone, say 99 percentile of this cell is completely filled with these TAGs and this do not have with the solely cell, with, the, with one and only cell, when a bunch of adipose cells, means say 70 percentile of the adipose cells are being filled with these TAGs, then they would, they would trigger a function, they would trigger a secretion known as leptin that would induce the brain, the hypothalamus, the hypothalamic arcuate cellular area this is rich in neuropeptide by and MSH stimulating signals, right? Would induce them, right? Would induce this leptin, and the leptin will go and get bound to this NPY. Now, this NPY is an area, right, which induces the signal of. Sorry, I said something wrong. So this would not bind to this NPY area because this NPY area is the area which induces the signal of eat, right? And we do not need our body to eat in the time when there is a flux of triacylglycerols in this adipose tissue. So what would happen is that leptin will go and bind to this MSH. This MSH is an area which induces the signal of stop eating. Once this signal of stop eat 
has been to the brain, brain will induce the appetite, lower down the appetite, suppress the appetite and say that there is an excess of triacylglycerols in this adipose tissue and meanwhile these triacylglycerols would be converted by the beta oxidation to their mono units that is to be converted into this acetyl CoA that would be carried out to this Krebs cycle and would be converted into ATPs by oxidative phosphorylation. Meanwhile, this, this molecule of leptin would be bound to this MSH. But the thing arises is when this leptin is bounded to this NPY also at the moment triggers the message of triggers the message of try to understand. This leptin is being secreted. It do not know where to bind and when to bind. So it will bind to both the molecules, NPY and MSH, right? And once it is bound to this NPY and MSH, there is a sort of confusion in the brain. So whether we have to trigger the, uh, whether the, we have to trigger the response of each or we have to trigger the response of stop each. Now this problem arises mainly many times with, with our bodies that whether we need to eat or not, at that moment, insulin jumps into the cascade. Insulin neither is breaking down this glucose molecule, it is antagonistic to glucose, that's okay. It's neither breaking down this glucose molecule into this uh, ATPs and further, insulin is also working to regulate this sort of appetite cascade in the human body or animal body, right? What this insulin does is that Meanwhile, pancreas would load this insulin that would convert this insulin into an active form and this insulin will come and bind to this NPY region 2 receptor 2 that is insulin bounding receptors. Once this insulin is bound to this receptor 2, what would it do is that block this area, block this receptor that is being triggered to enhance the response of each. So once what does it does is it blocks the receptor 1 that was bound to leptin due to which the response of each would be stimulated into the body. So meanwhile this MSH receptor domain 2 is quite easily could be loaded or, or quite easily could be read by the brain that body is saying TNG is the adipose is saying that we need to stop eating meanwhile we can carry out the beta oxidation that would create few molecules of ATPs in the body that would go, give a good energy to the body. So the thing, primary thing or, or the most important thing over here is to understand this leptin solely cannot work up till or unless this insulin is being induced in the body and this is the quite cross talk with where we were talking about if leptin was only stimulated or leptin was only secreted from TADs then that would be in adipose tissue then this would be a probable, probable chance that the body would get confused, brain would get confused and brain would not fry or, or brain, 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 brain neuronal system would get distorted at the moment, would not function properly. Now these are things was really very really astounding for me when very really primarily I felt that these are processes are going on in our body right now, right at the moment, and I already eat something. Now the problem to arise is when leptin induces the signaling of eat. Now this eating the e eat signal that is you need to eat signal is being induced from this neuropeptide by at that moment this TAGs will be 50% empathy with TAGs means adipose tissue, sorry, WATs will be 50% empathy with TAGs means adipose tissue will induce a response of there is a low amount of TAGs, I need a high amount of TAGs to carry out the oxidative phosphorylation or, or you can say beta oxidation later. So to do this, to induce this response, this leptin will come and bind to this NPY and meanwhile this insulin molecule, right, would be erased from this, this these receptors, right? It was sitting on receptor 2. Now, once this insulin molecule is being removed from here, another response will come over here, that is glucagon, will come and bind to this MSH and would induce the response, the response of stop it to be restricted for a moment 
and this leptin would induce the response of heat. So this is the way how these all molecules work interdisciplinary, carrying out changes, creating a crosstalk between different molecules and that's not quite a challenge for us because there are further more molecules that are working at the moment like norepinephrine and epinephrine triggers the adrogenic receptors to induce this leptin to be secreted from the body to carry out the beta oxidation meanwhile so various process at the moment create a cascade and this is the whole cascade what, for what we were talking about so I think that leptin is being completed right now and you, you need to just understand these fundamentals before going to the exam hall since these are the fundamentals that would be very very necessary for you to further if you want to pose as your your career in medical science or any sciences then this is the probable thing that you need to understand and that was a quite astounding for me also thank you guys and if you like this video keep on subscribing hit the bell icon thank you